Hi, this is Anders from Unleashed, and you're watching Richard Metal Fan. Hey, what's up, guys? Episode 264 of Richard Metal Fan Interviews, calling from Zoom, and I have the honor and the privilege to speak with Anders Schultz from the legendary Unleashed. How are you doing today, Anders? Glad to have you on. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I'm good. It's Sunday, but that's <laughs> Sunday is Sunday, but I'm good. No, thanks. Awesome. Sunday, fun day. <laughs> yeah, all right. <sighs> Time to work soon. <laughs> Exactly. So yeah. kind of the format is I want to talk about your musical history and do a rundown of the Unleashed discography, but take me back to young Anders Schultz. So kind of growing up in Sweden, what were the first bands that got you into metal? What made you want to start playing the drums? Uh, oh, shit. Uh, I, I don't know. In, in the start, the first, uh, the first band that I think I was like, you know, air drumming, whatever you did when you were a kid, I think it was Wasp, I think. Uh, like, I, like, I was at my friend's house and he was playing like Wasp and Accept, stuff like that. And I think that's when I, uh, and we were, you know, kids like, you know, 10 or something or nine or just trying to like play imaginary instruments or whatever. But I remember Wasp was one of the first, I mean, you know, when you're like, when you're a kid and you see and hear Wasp for the first time, what are you going to do, right? Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, and then, but I think what, yeah, uh, when I decided to start playing the drums, uh, it was uh, Slayer. Uh, Dave Lombardo, obvious. So, uh, and that's when I decided, like, because I tried playing the guitar when I was really young. Like, my mom took, got me, like, guitar classes or whatever. Uh, but I'm not, like, a... You know, it's small. <laughs> I'm not into fine, you know, fine playing. You know, you know what I mean. Like, I hit, yeah, hitting just things is better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hitting things with. I realized I can't do like all this, you know, fine mechanics with my fingers, or whatever for guitar. It's like that's not my thing. I realized quickly. So hitting things, I figured that's going to be good. So drums, it is right. And then Slayer, Dave Lombardo. Yeah, that's how it started. All right. And were you in bands before starting up Unleashed, or was Unleashed like your first band? Uh, I was in a uh, <clears throat> like a hardcore punk band. Uh, it was my first. Because I started in Unleashed, I mean, I was young. I was, I just turned 16 when I started with Unleashed. Uh, wow. So, I mean, there wasn't much time. I, mean, I started playing drums when I was like, you know, 13 or 14, so there was not much time in between. But I, but I did... Uh, I was in a hardcore punk band called Anorexia. It's a good hardcore band name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, put a put a demo out actually. Yeah, so I had time to put a demo out with those guys. Uh, and then I was, uh, yeah. And then I met uh, Johnny. I got introduced to Johnny at a at a party, uh, or like an outdoors party here in town. Uh, so I got introduced by a, a mutual friend, which was Grant McWilliams. Then was the lead singer for General Surgery after that. Wow. By the way, one of my oldest friends. Uh, but he introduced me to Johnny because they needed they were just starting up the band and they yeah. needed a drummer and I could I could barely play and I you know I was playing hardcore punk or whatever but we kind of set up some uh, like uh yeah, I came over to my I was living at my parents at that time he came over to my parents' place and see if I could play the drums which I kind of couldn't but somehow it's like yeah let's try it out and then we. Uh, yeah, and we took it from there. Awesome. And so you and Johnny formed Unleashed in 1989. So got to think about it, Anders. Like this year does also mark 35 years since the formation of the band. Yeah. You got to think yeah. three and a half decades yeah. of Unleashed. Like, did you guys think that you'd be around for 35 years? No, we didn't think we'd be 35 years old. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's crazy. That's, we, uh, we spoke about it the other day, actually, like. I, I just, fucking time flies. It was just like, a, you know, it felt like it was kind of not long ago since we we had a 30th year. You know what I mean? Just like, oh, uh, wait, it's 35 now. It's like, what the fuck? Uh, no, it's, no, nobody had an idea. Of course, we were kids, you know? We were just, and I guess still, I mean, we just do it. There's no, uh, nobody has a time frame or a time reference. We're just, you know, you keep doing it while you can do it, but uh, no, thirty-five years is a crazy number, and nobody ever thought that would happen. You know, yeah. there was no, yeah. I mean, there was no planning back then. We were just, you just do it. There was no planning. I mean, you you plan one thing, like yeah, we planned to do a demo. You know, when we started, 
uh, and you know that's as far as it went. And then you did the demo, and then okay, we let's do another demo, and then like hey, we got signed, and you know it just one thing at a time. And I mean, of course, there's been like some sort of a grand plan. I mean, of course, Johnny's had plans with the. I mean, he's doing like these kind of lyrics, which actually have a you know, uh, what do you call it, like a concept or whatever, which is for the future. But in the beginning, there was no plan. You know, there was no. Uh, it's oh shit, we're gonna tour. All right, cool. You know, you just did that. And, oh, we're gonna tour again. And, okay, let's do another record. It's just you wing it and you play. You know, you take one thing at a time. But yeah, but in the beginning, no plans at all. There was just like you just wanted to play metal and drink, and you know, you got the chance to make a record, go on tour, and that that's you know that's as far. You, you never thought that would happen, anyways. Even the in the beginning, it's like what the, we're getting to do this. I mean, nobody, nobody. Yeah, we didn't think so. We didn't plan for it. It just happened, you know? Yeah. And tell me about, like, some of those first demos, The Utter Dark and Revenge. I kind of like those early versions of, like, Violent Ecstasy, Ancient Dead, yeah. Dead, and even Where Life Ends. It's just, Those demos are just very, like, raw and in your face. So where were those recorded yeah. at? Uh, uh, <laughs> we, uh, the first one, I think we do both at the same place. It, it, it's funny. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine about that the other day, too. Uh Actually, yeah, one of the UK from General Surgery also. I was talking to him the other day about this, the sound of things back in those days because like, you can't reproduce those, those, the sound from those days because basically back then nobody knew what the fuck they were doing. Because, <laughs> I mean, now, it, I mean, yeah, you got to remember, like back in those days, nobody who had a studio had any idea what death metal was. I mean, it's like the the Entomb guys, and when they started working with you know Skooksby and the uh, Sunlight Studio, this guy was like he understood it. You know what I mean? So they they actually you know they made things sound good, and professional, or whatever. But we went to to hire like to rent the studio to make the first demo. There was like no budget, of course. Uh, we were paying out of pocket, and then you go to a studio because we didn't want to go to Sunlight because we didn't want to sound like everybody else because. I mean, you know, he put out great records and they have a great sound, but we didn't want to have that sound because we wanted to be different and like, you know. Uh, so it's like, okay, we go to an, we go to another studio. But there was no other studio that knew what Death Metal was or what it's supposed to sound like. So we go to this place, this guy, so he, yeah, he rents us a studio. Uh, you know, four kids come in there and he hated it. Yeah, he fucking hated it. And uh, of course, so he was just like, he was like, and we're trying to get like to explain what we wanted to sound like, but we're kids and we have no idea how production works or nothing. So we we're like, we want it to sound like this and this and this. And this guy's like, you know, I hate this. So he told us to our faces, he's like, this, what the fuck are you doing? This sucks. <laughs> but what are you gonna? So we're like, okay, just try to make it sound like this, that, the other. And he was like, okay, uh, he, you know, he pulls, twists the knobs and does all this stuff and tries to get a sound. It sounds like shit, you know. But what are you gonna do? But uh, and he said, he's like, I do not put my name on this demo. Like, he was totally embarrassed of it. He hated us. He hated the band. He hated the music. He hated everything. But that's what we had to do. We're like, we, we couldn't go to a different place. We tried to make the best of it. But that makes the sound, uh, you know, it makes it on. It makes it fucking brutal. I mean, it's not a good sound, but it's cool. It sounds, it's honest, you know. And it's just, <laughs> and uh, that's why you can't reproduce these things, you know. You yeah. couldn't do it again and try to get this sound because this sound became of that. But it was a funny thing because this guy was fucking, he totally hated it. But I think, I mean, it, yeah, you can feel it's it's raw as hell and it sounds, you know, really, it's cool. It's a good sound. And just because of that, I mean, nowadays you couldn't, I mean, it, it sounds like shit. It, you know, but it sounds great at the same time because of this. I mean, there's another energy to it and when it's not like finely produced and all this stuff. You know, but it's uh, you couldn't do that now, and it was a thing of the moment, you know. Yeah, then you start playing around Sweden and you got signed to Century Media Records. So, how did yeah. they find Unleashed? Yeah, that's a good question. That was that was fun. I don't know because uh, this was my uh, I, I don't know how I found it, but they found somehow and they uh, they, they found me somehow. I was at home, like, I was still living at my parents' place, and my mother comes into my room and like. There's somebody from Germany I want to talk to. I was like, you know, and I was like, I was 16 at the time. I was like, what? 
I pick up the phone. It's like some guy from Germany is like, hey, you know, you know, I work for, you know, we have a label. We want to maybe sign you guys and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, what the fuck? And I was like, yeah, maybe you want to talk to Johnny or somebody who knows anything about, because I was, <laughs> I mean, because Johnny's at least a couple years older and I was a bit more, you know, but I had no idea. So he was like, no, we'll, we'll We'll send you a package of stuff of things we've uh, put out and, uh, you know, and we can talk. And so like a few days later, I got a huge package, you know, with like all the releases so far and a bunch of T-shirts and sweatshirts and whatever, like a really like a bribe package or whatever. And uh, and I yeah, to this day, I don't know how they found me or my phone number or my parents phone number, uh, but they did somehow. And yeah, they. So they called me and sent us this package. Like they want to, we want to see you guys. So they, I don't, I don't exactly the details of everything how it happened, but they, uh, they wanted to see us. So they, they took us down to Germany to uh, play a show. So I think we played, or maybe they just took us out to like hang out because I remember we, we went, we saw Demolition Hammer at this small club in Germany, yeah. just hanging out with the label, and they were like, you know, we we're drinking beer, and like what the fuck? All right, so was that like your first time playing in outside of Sweden? And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, but we didn't play actually that we didn't play that show. We just went yeah we went down to Germany and we hung out with them and they, they took us out to this club. We saw them and have a play. So we met those guys the first time then, and then I think it was maybe the same trip. But then they set up a show with us and it was uh, I I still I have that flyer somewhere. But it's us and German atrocity from Germany. Uh, and some other band we uh, used to play like a one-off show in some weird club in Germany which was then our first uh, show outside of Sweden I mean it was like our fourth show ever so we only play like a f three or four shows in Sweden like at these small like youth centers or whatever uh, yeah and then yeah I guess um, I guess on that trip we signed the contract and then yeah and that was it we started uh, that's when it started yeah, and then tell me about making the first album, Where No Life Dwells. I thought this was a yeah. really great debut album. So what was sort of like the thought process going into making the debut Unleashed album? Uh, well, we uh, so we had yeah, we had a few songs, and we had the, the songs from the demo. Not all of them are on the record, uh, I think. Uh, maybe they are. But we also went down... Uh, was that before that? Because we went down also to record a 7-inch. Uh, which I think was done before the album, if I'm not mistaken, because they took us down. We went down to a studio in Germany, uh, which was a different one to the album, and then we made a seven inch, uh, and also a couple of songs they put on a compilation record, which might have been before the first album. This I don't remember, but uh, the seven inch was for sure before the first album because they had some songs on the album that came on that album as well. Uh, uh, but this, yeah, it's 30 some years ago. I don't remember the details. But then we we done to do the album because basically about the song, because the songs were songs we already had, the songs on the two demos, uh, and maybe there's another one that we put on that seven inch. I don't remember. But then we had a few more songs. So basically, that that the songs on that album had been stuff we'd been working on since the start of the band. And you put all those songs together, which was then six or seven songs, maybe. And then we we'd written some more songs. So, uh, so that was like a kind of you took what you had and re recorded those songs for the album plus a few new ones. Uh, so I guess it wasn't there wasn't like a really thought through concept of the of the album. Uh, and yeah, again they took us down to Germany, so we recorded that Woodhouse studio, which was I guess where Central Media made most of the records at the time at that place. Uh, and it was great too because that's. The previous times, like the demos, and even with the seven inch, we went down and recorded. It was I mean a bit more like you only had a certain like a small amount of time, like a couple of days to get everything done and all the stuff. The the album was more. I don't know how long we were down there, but I mean maybe it was, it was like ten days or something. We yeah you know, we were staying at uh, this guy Frank Albrecht. His he was a writer for the German Rock Hard magazines. We stayed at his apartment. All four of us crammed into one room in sleeping bags. And uh, yeah, we went out to the nightclubs or whatever in Dortmund and partied in the evenings. And we went. They took us. They picked us up. Valdemar, who was the producer, he picked us up in the morning. Went to the studio. We were there all day, and then back, and just record all day. 
And then, yeah, get back to the apartment, go out, have beers, and then just do it all over there until it was done. And it was just like to have a bit more time than with the demos and, and with somebody, uh, with the guy, the, the guys involved, knowing what they were doing so we could actually at least try to explain what we wanted it to sound like and they understood instead of somebody just basically hitting your guts and when you get just want to take your money and get you the fuck out of there. So that was like, that was a cool experience to be able to do that for actually, you know, uh, being professional and like to get up a, a record and a product that was that you could be I mean because the demos that when we did them I mean you were proud of it because you made it and you actually it was a kind of a struggle to do them but at the same time you're like shit it could have sounded a bit better you know you had the demos didn't really the visions of what you wanted to create weren't really didn't really become as you wanted it with the demos because you had no uh yeah you had it's no like a learning really experience did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because again, we were kids. We had no idea what the fuck we we're doing. You know, you had an idea of what you wanted the result to be, but there was no way to know how to get there. So with the album, the first, yeah, getting to do it in a professional studio where people knew what they were doing. I mean, that was a great thing, you know. And that actually turned out like as you wanted it to turn out, you know. Yeah. And so, what was like the touring cycle like for When No Life Dwells? Did you like start touring outside of like Europe for the first time? Like, yeah. what, were, what was that like playing yeah. like different countries? Yeah. I mean, that was great too. It was the same. We were just, again, this that album was like, and we'd only been playing for a couple of years, not even almost, you know. And, and all of a sudden, it's like, bang, you get go down, do a record. And because we actually started touring and playing shows outside of, you know, outside of Sweden or, and basically, yeah, we did those first couple of shows in Sweden, like we did that yeah, three or something shows in Sweden. Then we did that German show, and then, and then we didn't play. Then we just they they sent us out before the album came out. When we still had just the demos out, I guess maybe they that seven inch came out, and they put us on like a just to get us out there before the album came out. They put us on a tour with uh, Boltor and Nocturnus, uh, with a short short tour like ten day tour or something but that was before the album even came out like i mean of course we'd already been doing the demos and the flyers and the rumors as as it worked in the underground scene back then but they were still like most of us didn't know who we were you know and so just to come out there and open up to those bands on like a short tour just before the album even came out it was like so you already started to get that that touring experience which was in those days when as a demo band opening up it was a very uh it wasn't very not very luxurious like that but it was you got that you got into that touring experience really quick and yeah. then after that the album came out and they, they were like uh, I think the first tour we did after that when the album came out uh, we might have done some, some shows like some small things but like the first day they called us up and like okay like we want to put you on tour with Morbid Angel we we're like fuck you know that's awesome wow. like, who else they're like yeah, and they we're like, oh, who else? They're like, Sadus. And we're like, no shit, because, like, you know, I mean, we like Sadus even more than we like. Very Morgan underrated Angels. band. Fuck, yeah. I, I love that band, you know? And that's they're like, yeah. So, first to hear Morbid Angel, and then, like, it even tops that. We heard Sadus. We're like, fuck, hell, that's awesome, you know? So, so we did like a four week or something tour with them just straight off the bat when the album was out. With, and then we did, we got along well with Morbid Angel, the Morbid Angel guys. So, we, uh, uh, I don't remember how long after that, but after that tour, like, yeah, we want you to do the state as well. So we, then we went like, okay, so you guys and Entombed are going to go do a U.S. tour with Morbid Angel. Yeah. It was like, fucking hell. Yeah. You know? And what was that, that was like awesome. touring the States for the first time back in 91? Uh, that, was, that was awesome. I mean, I was <laughs> I was underage at the time, so I wasn't even allowed to drink, basically. <laughs> uh, I mean, I was, uh, yeah, uh, so, I mean, I was barely 18, I think, we did that first U.S. tour. Uh, might have been it was seventeen, but it was yeah, but it was fucking it was awesome. Just to, then we had we had buses, yeah, we were on nightliners and stuff, you know. And uh, there was a long tour, like five weeks or five six weeks, I don't know. But it was just just go around and see all the places and just yeah. and it as a kid especially, you know, you're like, I, just like what was your favorite state out with to a bunch see? Of cool people. Oh shit. Uh, there was so much crazy shit that went on on that tour, but uh, it's hard to say. It was we had a it was a good time, all in all. You know, it was because it was a good, it was a good run too. It was like it actually covered most 
I mean, there I mean, it's probably a bunch of stuff in the in the middle that you missed as always, but but it was a good run, and it was you got most of the yeah you know, most of the, most of as you can do on a six week tour, or whatever. But yeah, it was fantastic. It was awesome. Like yeah, I know, wish I could have seen that tour. Too bad I was not even born yet. <laughs> shit. Yeah. Well, it puts yeah it puts shit into context, doesn't it? Fucking, that's a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. And did you ever play, play like the old masquerade in Atlanta, Georgia back in the day? Because if you remember yeah. like the old spot, like they used to like to load in gear, they would have like a little elevator or like on a rope thing and they would yeah, yeah. The on the outside. Yeah. 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 And then they would like load yeah, it, we, raise it up. Yeah. Yeah. We played that a few times. Uh, I remember that. Uh, yeah. We played that on. Uh, we actually, we even play that. Is that place closed down nowadays? Yeah, but it moved to a new spot at the end of okay. 2016. See, and it's more easier, but they have like these long like okay. hallways, ways and stuff to load in. It's like it almost feels like a maze sometimes. You can even get lost in there. Yeah, I mean the old it was it's a cool place. I mean, they had some crazy nightclubs in the basement too. Where you know, have to do the show, you just go down to the basement to some weird techno shit or whatever. <laughs> that was like in uh, because we played there on the uh, when we did the. The last U.S. tour we did so far was like it's a long time ago now too. Proper U.S. tour which is t- 2008, I think, with obituary. Yeah, I know that. Remember that? And, uh, we, yeah, my that, that, my boys in Carnifex was yeah, playing with started. you guys. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Carnifex. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. Those. Yeah, those guys are cool. Awesome They're dudes. my buddies. Uh, Love those guys. Oh yeah, no shit. Ah, right, tell them hey for me. I haven't seen those guys in forever. Uh, I haven't seen those guys since then. I think they were kids back then. They were young. Yeah. But it, no, they were great dudes. But yeah, that that tour actually started in the, at the uh, was it Masquerade Marquee? What, what was it again? Yeah, it was uh, Masquerade. Yeah, that yeah that that tour actually had the first day was at that place. Nice. The first day of the tour. Yeah, that was great. We met all the guys, and yeah, that was awesome. That was a nice. good tour. And then moving on to the next album, A Shadow in the Deep. I like this album because usually with the debut full-length album, you have your entire life to write, and there's a lot of hype with the first album. When it came to yeah. making Shadows in the, in the Deep, did you feel pressure to follow up Where No Life Dwells? Uh, I don't know. It's, I don't think we ever felt like that somehow. Uh, it was... Because it, it's like, like we always do. It's uh, like as soon as like when you... When, when you make an album and the album comes out and by the time it's done, I mean, there's been a lot of work put into that, but you've already started, like, when everything's done for the record, it still takes a while before you start recording, you go to a studio and whatnot and then get everything together. You're already starting to write because you're constantly writing. So it's like, from like, oh, these are the songs, it's, it's done, whatever, and then you plan it to do all the, it's the layout in the studio and all this stuff. And, uh, by the time that gets done, you've already been writing songs for like six months already, like newer stuff. So it, it all kind of intertwines. So you just keep writing. And there's not, it's not like you write the stuff for a new album, then it, you take a break and then you make the album and then it comes out. And then like, okay, now we're going to write new stuff because you're already, you're doing it constantly. So there's no real, I don't, know, we, I don't think we've ever felt like that. Like there's any like, we did one record, now we're going to do another one, and then it has to be as good or whatever. It's like you just, it's a constant process. So, it, but, and at the time, I don't know, at the time, because now it's like, I mean, we've done it for a long time and you, you, you kind of get your way of doing it. But at the time, maybe there was, there was pressure to uh, outperform whatever you've done before, but that's some, some, I don't think so. I think we never thought like that. And this, again, it's like, okay, we did this, we're working on the new stuff, and like the next, focuses on the next one or whatever and then you just do it you know yeah but it, but and some of those songs were probably like written even back in the demo days more like they were ideas already back then so they were like just worked on so it, so uh, yeah a lot of those they maybe it's like like oh, there's no room for this on this record or whatever so we'll just keep it and we'll work on it and then it turns into something for the next album you know so it's just uh it's, it's a constant thing so I don't know, but it but it turned out it turned out good, and plus, yeah, you get the experience. And that one was done at I think in the same studio, the Woodhouse studio again. And it's like you were comfortable, and you were trying to you get more of an idea of how things work. So you are just uh, it was made it easier somehow. But then, yeah, but yeah, there is pressure, I guess, though, because even if things get easier, you, yeah, you like you want to make it better. Of course, that's the that that would be the pressure. You want the sound to get better. You want the songs to get better. So. <laughs> 
you know. A bit and of then, pressure, but not like not something you think about like uh like you like a, like you get stressed or whatever. It's just you know, you just do it. Yeah. And then I know on this album you actually did a cover of Venom's Count to Bathory, which is definitely one yeah, of my favorite yeah, Venom yeah. songs. So what made you guys decide to cover that song in particular? I don't know what the thought process behind that was really. I mean I mean, nowadays, I, I don't know what the thought process is of making a cover on an album anyways. That's kind of a, <laughs> to me, that's kind of a stupid thing to do. <laughs> so I'm not sure why we did that. I guess we just thought it was a cool idea. I mean, you want to pay your respects to, to something that you really, I mean, Venom is one of the things that have, has you know, founded, you know, or been a big part of this band uh, in the early days, especially. I guess you want to pay tribute somehow. Uh, and it actually, yeah, it turned out okay, which, I mean, I, it's a good cover. It turned out good, so, you know. Yeah. But these things can fail easily, so I'm not really sure why we did that, to be honest. I wouldn't do that again, I don't think. To, I, like, waste. I mean, there's if there's room to make your own stuff, I'm not sure why. I mean, you could like to use a cover as a, I'm not sure if it was maybe intended to be like some kind of a... Because back in those days, too, the label was... They were weird to deal with somehow. They they had like weird ideas, and it maybe it was, it was thought to be some kind of a some kind of a like B side to a single or something like a cool release. And then it was, oh no, it didn't happen like this. We'll just put it on the album. It could have might have been could easily been something like that that they just had like an idea and it didn't work, so they did something else. And it was you know it's hard to say it because I I don't need, not really sure why that it's even on there, but because I know when, later on it was there was like a. You know, you made it. You make a cover because you want to pay tribute. It's a fun thing to do, and then it turns out to a special version of a release or something. Because that makes more sense to me, you know. <clears throat> but it, but it turned out good. It for like Venom is yeah, one of my favorite bands, especially back in those days. The stuff you grew up on, and you want to do something cool with it, you know. Yeah, and then of course you also dedicated this album to the memory of Pearl, and you know, aka Dead from Mayhem. So did yeah. you did you ever did like show? Did you all like do shows with Mayhem back in the day? No, no, no. It was uh, no. He moved. He moved. Uh, I was never like a super good friends with him. But Johnny and, and Freddie was uh, old friends with him. I I met him a few times at Johnny's place, but we were never. He moved before I joined. I mean, because he moved to Norway around that time when I joined the band, more or less. I think. Uh, so I just met him a few times, hung out. He was a cool guy. Uh, but Johnny and Freddie were close, you know, to him, yeah. and. Uh, but there was never any talk of us doing anything like there. I mean, there was a bit of a weird thing with the Swedes and Norwe Norwegians at the time. <laughs> uh, so, there, I mean, at that time, like Death Metal and Black Metal didn't really mix. There wasn't really mixed shows back then. Cause yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. Now two, there's two like Black kinda. and Death Metal now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was a, there, there was a weird, there was a weird uh, balance of things going on back in those days with the, Death and black metal, uh, but yeah, but they, I mean that was that dedication was of course because they were very good friends with him, uh, and uh, yeah, it's a shame it went the way it did. You know? Yeah, and then going into the next album, Across the Open Sea, I like this probably in my opinion my favorite Unleashed album. So yeah. what was it like going from this to this? Same thing. It was. Uh, it's tricky because you somehow, especially I think back now, it's easy to, to look back and compare, you know. But in those uh, back then, we just uh, you just went on. It's like things were working out, and you were you were we were touring a lot back in those days, like uh, uh, and just practicing. We were in the practice room like every week, you know, a few times like every week, constantly, constantly touring, constantly flying, just writing new stuff, and it was. It's hard to say, like, it's hard to say a difference, like, in the process of, and what we were thinking as well as the process. So you'd focus on writing new songs and writing good songs and getting, getting them together and just making a better record than the previous one is the, always the plan. You know, it's like, this one is turned out like this. There's some things I don't like about this or some things we should do differently. So let's do that for the next one. And, and then you just go, you know. But I also think yeah, there's some of the, out of those, the first three, that's also one of my, it's hard to say really which is your favorite too, because there's some, there's some songs on like on this one is better than the other one, whatever, but there's some, 
some of my favorite songs are on that one too. Yeah, like to ask God we fly is another yeah, great song. Yeah. Yeah. Like I am God. And I loved you did the Judas Priest cover, which I thought was fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's again, it's the same thing there. We chose to do a cover again, which I, I'm not sure what the thought process behind it was. Uh, but it, it might've also been that I was supposed to have been on something else, but then also back in those days, I'm not sure if it's like that anymore still, but it like, it, it was very important that things were supposed to be a certain length and a certain, there was like, the label was very much they, more in those days. They were trying to like they were kind of getting involved with all that. Oh, but you need another song, or you need, like you, it needs to be five minutes longer. And it's like you know these kind of things. So it might have been put on there as uh, something like this as well. It's like we we recorded it for fun, and then like now we should include it. And we're like ah maybe not, but they're like yeah let's do it or for whatever reason. But but uh yeah that was a weird <laughs> that was a. To me, I, I've never been like a huge priest fan. I mean, of course, back in the days when you listen, you know, when you were a kid growing up on that stuff, but I was never like a huge priest fan. So it was a bit weird to me. Like, if you're going to do a cover of something, it should be like something you really like. Like, or, you know, and that one I wasn't. I mean, I liked the later Jewish priest stuff, you know, like. I would have wanted to do something off of, you know, Defenders or like uh, Screaming for Vengeance or something. That would have probably made a better result for me personally, whatever. Yeah, but but still, it was a, it was a fun thing to do. Yeah, I also love like the Viking thing theme, and I feel like I love one thing I love about Unleash is like you don't really, really are like the first band to talk about like Vikings and North mythology and yeah. stuff, like focusing on typical death mode, which is about like gore and dismembering and shit. And I feel like you're yeah. like very kind of like original, like lyrically, you're kind of like doing the Viking stuff even before like a Monomarth doing it. So yeah, uh, that's one thing I love about this album. It definitely still is like my favorite album. Yeah, yeah, that's when that that because. Uh, Previous to that, I mean, it was, yeah, the lyrics were a bit more death metal oriented or whatever you spell, like, traditionally, as you would say. But so that's the one where you kind of started finding that focus uh, and, like, uh, to, like, because the thing, too, is same as, as we wanted to, like, in the in the beginning, you know, we wanted to go into different studios, everyone else, you want your own sound, you want to do something differently. And then you realize, like, hey, wait, you know, there's, because uh, like the old uh, Norse mythology and stuff was like a big interest for us, you know. And then it's like, wait, well, you could you could incorporate this because it's actually like a subject that is pretty. It's pretty, yeah. You know, it can be done, and you can put this into death metal. It doesn't have to be like the normal. Yeah, like in those days, it was all mostly like the gore and the, you know, of course the anti-religious stuff, which is, you know, that's uh, the Norse mythology is also anti-christian in one way like in, in a big way you know uh so it's like yeah this can be incorporated into this kind of music it fits like the, the lyric the subject uh would fit with death but so you kind of like this is when we started i guess to like wait a minute yeah we can do this and this would also make it make a difference make you stand out a bit and then actually do something that also means something to you at the same time as, as something that nobody really done before. I mean, Bathory was the only one, like, basically the only band who have done something like this. And at the time when they really started doing the Norse Pistology thing, they weren't really death metal anymore. So, I think technically it would make us the first death metal band to do this, you know? Yeah. Because because uh, nobody had done it before except for Bathory, but they were not death metal when they did it. Yeah, you know, they, I love That's how. when they started. Yeah, they turned into a bit something different, you know? Yeah, I love how you guys are. I love how Mon Marth would probably be like, yeah, we we did Viking Metal first, and I bet Unleash would be like, hold my beer. <laughs> yeah, no, but they, no, but they, there's uh, there's no secret that the, uh, I mean, I mean, I wouldn't be like going out on a limb if I said that uh, the main inspiration to what they did is us. I mean, they've yeah. said so themselves. I mean, I know those guys like, you know, we're buddies. So it's like, basically, that's how it is. Nice. Without, Unle without Unleashed, there would not be any amount of art, at least not in the way they're doing it now. Nice. And I yeah. love how, like, like with the first three albums, they were kind of, like, released, like, a year after each other, 91, 92, 93. Like, you guys were, like, on a roll with those first three albums. It just, just felt, yeah. like, inspir inspired you just want to keep grinding out music. Yeah, but that's how it was. We were just, we just lived in that practice room where we just that's all we did. You know, we toured, we practiced, and we made records. You know, that's uh, that's how it was. Yeah. Which is, yeah, it was great because 
I mean, yeah, you're a kid and you can, you get to do this, you know, you, or you get to do that, you get to get the chance to do that because there's all, I mean, back in the, like, yeah, I was living at my parents' house, it was like, rent was cheap and there was like, you know, you could just, it was enough to survive just by doing that, you know, and you could just go, go and do it and you could put all your focus into it, which is, I mean, obviously you, this had, you know, that had to change after a while because when you wanted to get like a proper, proper life, there was no way of doing that anymore. But in those first years, you know, that's all you could, you could just go for it, which was great. You know, but then, yeah, then life, life called. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so you just really yeah. wanted to take your time to like hone in on the next album at victory. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's the same. Yeah. We just, uh, uh, it's hard to, again, there is like, it's impossible to say like how we were thinking at the time, you know, because yeah, you just kept writing stuff, but then there's like, the, there's that moment when you want to like, yeah, you want to branch out a bit and you want to turn it. I mean, because this band is always a bit about consistency because you want to like, uh, it's a tricky tricky road too because how are you going to do it you want to change and you want to do something new but you don't want to lose what you were because a lot of bands will be like okay like we've done this and now we want to evolve and then they become something different you know yeah. which is which is uh, you know each to one's own that's cool but uh, and some people make you know, maybe a bit too much of a point of doing it they want to do something different they want to change they want to evolve and then it turns into a different band you know Totally. And yeah, and we didn't want that. So we wanna yeah, but then how do you do that? How do you change without losing what you were, you know? So that's to like so to evolve within what you're doing, but not evolving too much or making it too too big of a difference. That's the tricky part. So I think at that time we we're starting to make those the, the those after like the third album, it was a bit of a struggle to do that you know to like to make it because you want to know if you, as soon as you put the record on you want to hear that it's unleashed but then at the same time you can't just rehash everything and make the same record over and over yeah unless if you're acdc the, you can't do that shit. yeah yeah yeah. then you can do that but that's, yeah acdc maybe <laughs> motorhead also a bit it's like yeah that's true but, but like, yeah, within death metal that's kind of tricky you know yeah. uh so then there yeah, there so there that would be like the that would be a bit of a struggle uh, in those days. Like, how the fuck do you, where are you going to go from there, you know? Totally. And, you know, next year we'll mark the 30-year anniversary of victory. Is there a chance we yeah. can get a celebration of this somehow? Oh, shit. Yeah, that's, I don't know. Uh, there's so much of that now, because there's like, yeah, nowadays, yeah, there's always going to be, like, when you get to this point, there's like, there's always a 25 or a 30 or 20-year, you know, yeah anniversary of something what the fuck like you know you can't celebrate everything but yeah but it's yeah. a good idea actually and we're not very good at the, thinking out these things it's uh we're not so good at this because you know it's we don't really think too much about the past so like you know you could like i see that like on you get onto like uh what do you call it, like instagram or something on the on you see like people posting stuff it's like, oh because i have no idea y'all see so he's like, oh, this is the whatever anniversary of this record. And I was like, oh, shit, is it? You know, people know the dates and all this when the records come out. I have no idea about these things, you know? So yeah. it's, uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to keep track of your own shit, basically. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then moving on to the next album, Warrior. I lo love, love that album. Like, tell me about that. Uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's This is... Uh, I'm not sure we we made a decision to go to a different studio, but that might have been the album before that. I'm not. I don't remember exactly. But this, to me, is uh, 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 that album has some properly good songs on it, and some songs we still play, and you know, I like a lot. But to me, that I don't know. I, that's not my favorite. You know, I, I think, think it's a very underrated time. album. It this, yeah. I'm not really. I've not listened to it in a long time. But no, I, personally, I wasn't happy with the sound of it because uh, I'm not sure if that's when we changed the studio or whatever. And the, but this made it a bit trickier. And to me, I, I'm not happy with how it turned out with sound-wise. There's some proper good songs on it that we still play live. Uh, but it's uh, to me that was a bit of a 
Yeah, as we as I was saying before, it's like it's hard to know where you're gonna go. Like, where are you going? How are you gonna change stuff without changing too much and all this stuff? And I think that was a bit tricky at that time. Uh, I'm not sure when that, what year that is. In that come out like '97, yeah. And I think at the '97, I know for a fact we were getting a bit. Yeah, how do you put it? Maybe a bit burnt out. <laughs> uh, there was a bit of. There was a bit of internal uh, troubles at the time, and we were doing, uh, still doing a lot of touring up until then. And '97 was also like the year when like death metal died uh, for a while. I mean, it was dead and buried at the time, more or less. Uh, I'm not. I can't remember what else was. There was something that, was, that just took over from that. Yeah. And there was like you, you were doing tours constantly, and there was like nobody showing up for the shows, and it was like a, it was like a rough time. So I think everybody was a bit more like, you know, like, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> and that was the, the only time when I was thinking, like, you know what? Maybe this is it, you know? Because we had, there was a bit of that feeling in 97, like that, yeah, there was a, I don't know, kind of a bit of a, the spirit was a bit you know, dampened or whatever, and we're all, like, kind of, yeah, kind of burnt out from everything. you like, kind of, like, you know, like you come home from a tour, you'd be like, you know, just don't call me, I'll call you kind of thing. Yeah, for a while. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so I remember. Yeah, there was a bit of a. There was, I think the, uh, if you could put it like this, which is also it's nowadays it's such a long time ago. But uh, looking yeah. back, it's a bit. We were a bit. Uh, yeah, we were a bit tired of everything at the time. I think. Yeah. But it was still. Uh, it's a good record. It comes. Uh, some good, proper, good songs on it. Yeah, it was also but the was first good. album with uh, Frederick Trick in yeah, the band. Exactly, so yeah. how'd he join? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was a acquaintance, I guess, uh, because that's funny too. We laugh about that nowadays because he joined at the absolute shittiest time to join. <laughs> he had offers from other bands as well at the time, and he chose us, which is uh, at that time was a fucking bad choice. <laughs> but uh, no, he because uh, <clears throat> we needed we needed a new guitarist, and uh, he's from he's from uh, up north, where Thomas is from as well originally. So I guess uh, he knew him or knew of him from uh, like when they were younger, and uh, he had an idea to call him, I guess. And uh, so we called it, called him, and like set up a meet, and we, uh, and it was yeah, we got along well, like personally. So it's like, all right, let's do it. And he decided to join us instead of the other offers that he had. Uh, and so, because I, I guess he, I think he has like one song on that record that he had time to get on there. I think. Uh, if I remember correctly, because yeah, and then, and then after that, basically, I think we did like uh, he joined and we did like maybe one or two tours and did that record. And then it was like, you know what, <laughs> maybe it's not this, not going anywhere. It's a, it's a weird time, but uh, I guess that I'm sure he regretted at the time. So he was like, man, I should have joined somebody else, but uh, but, you know, it, this is how it goes sometimes, yeah. but then you. Yeah, you move forward. Yeah, and it's crazy. Like you've pretty much had like the same lineups after Frederick joined. You pretty much haven't had a member change since then. So that was like in '95 or so, almost 30 years with that without any yeah. member changes. Yeah. So what keeps you guys <laughs> yeah. still still together and still going strong and be on like on the same page after all these years? Yeah, that's we get that question a lot, and uh, there's never really a good answer to it. Or uh, 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 there is. I guess it's just uh, having the same goals. I guess that's as as a, as I was saying earlier. Like, if you have bands that like you know you do a few records and you want then you want to evolve, uh, but maybe a bit too much. And this is also a lot of times I you've seen that dude like different members in the band wanting to go different directions. Like you know you have a band that like they're doing one thing and like they do a record or two and then like. It's very solid, and then like it starts going a bit like t in different directions. Like you have a guitarist like, well, I like this kind of music, and you have another guitarist, I like this kind of music. We should be more, you know. You can tell that this is happening. They start pulling in different directions, and maybe one guy leaves, maybe they change the date. You know, all this kind of stuff happens, uh, and it's happened to a lot of bands. But then we never, it's never been like that because like from the start, like when we started, we said, okay, this is. This is what we're doing, and this is what we're gonna do. This is like, this is the goal. This is what we, yeah, this is what we do. And if you want to change that too much, then 
it's not us anymore. So then we'll have to split up or change the name or whatever, you know? Yeah. But this was said from the start. I mean, the, like this was properly, honestly said from the start, like we're doing this. And if we, if we don't do that anymore, then we're going to, we're not going to do anything, you know, and then we'll have to change the name. And this is also when Freddie joined uh, at the time, of course, it, it, he was, you know, also where it's like, this is what we're going to do. And like, there's no point. And like, if you want to play something else, then you, you play something else in something else. You don't do it here, you know, <laughs> more or less. Because this because we have, we're going this way. Yeah. And then of course, it's got, it's got to be, you do as, you know, you want to change and develop and all this stuff as much as you want or as much as you can, but it's still got to be the same thing. And it's still got to be, you still got to hear that it's us, you know? And exactly. so if you have that, if you have that from the start, that like this is what we do. If you want to do something else, do it somewhere else. And it's but if you have that same goal, I'd like, oh, but I really I want to go in that way. All right, then we're going this way, then yeah, you can't do it. So you have to have the the, the common goal and this has to be and you have to be happy with that. And like, yeah. you know, this is also if you're I've seen that happen too. Like you have some guy and one guy in the band is like, oh, but I really don't like this that we're doing. I want to go a different way, but he still does it. Because of whatever reasons, like oh, maybe it's you know maybe he pays bills, I don't know, but whatever. But you can tell that it's not something one of, he wants to do or whatever, and you will notice, and it doesn't work. So you have to have the same focus, and you have to have plus you gotta have, you gotta want to do it, and it's like, you can't pretend. So you gotta you gotta be true to what you're doing. You you have to love it. And you have to you have to be into it. You know, and we are, and there's still never a question. There's never a question like somebody comes to the like oh I have this song and it's like and there's <laughs> And it's different, and it's something else. There's, this has not, never been a problem that there's going to be like a discussion. Well, it doesn't fit, blah blah blah. No, because that's never going to happen because we know what we're doing, we know what we want to do. So then I think it's easy. There's never been like a, there's never been a question. You know, if it, there's never arguments about shit like this because we know, you know, what we want to do, we know what we're doing. Yeah. And I think that's probably the key, I guess. You know, because if you yeah, as soon as you start like wanting to, you know, get spread out too much, then it's going to be a problem. But we don't do that. We don't have that. So that's probably the main reason, I think. Right. And then flash forwarding being five years into 2002, Hell's Unleashed. I pretty much consider that a very underrated al album. And I noticed there's like the five year gap between Warrior and Hell's yeah. Unleashed. So what was the reason yeah. for it taking like five years between albums? Yeah. Well, that's like I said previously. This is that time was, uh, I mean, we didn't split up, but I mean, technically, we almost, in a way, we did because we just we came home from this one tour, like in '97, there, yeah, and then like you know what? I said, "Fuck this!" It's I mean, I mean, obviously there was stuff. I mean, at that time, you know, we were that you're in that age when people are starting to get kids, and you gotta like you gotta make a living, you gotta you have to have a place to live, you, you know, all this shit you need, you gotta pay the bills, and I I don't remember exactly what was going on at the time, but yeah, people had stuff to do and. You know, and like your work and all this shit, your life. And this would be the age when you're, you're in your, you know, your mid, when it's how old are you, like 20s, 30s. That's when you have shit going on. And at the same time, like I said, the market was fucking dead. There was like, there was no place for death metal tours, shows, anything. I mean, there wasn't any, anywhere near like the amount of festivals that there are now. There was nothing going on and nobody was booking death metal. Everybody's just dead. And at the same time, we were fucking tired of everything, like tired of each other, I guess, in a way too. And it's like, so it wasn't like a planned break. It just happened. You know, we came over on a tour and like I said, it's like, all right, don't call me. I'll call you. We went, our, you know, went about our business, <laughs> basically. And we just didn't talk for a, for a while, you know? And there was not like, there was like, okay, let's not talk for whatever year, months or years. It was just like, we went home and did our respective shit. And uh, there was no, like, let's break up. There was no talk about breaking up or not breaking up. We just didn't do any. We just didn't see each other for a long time. And I guess, it was, I mean, it was bound to happen, too, after all that. I mean, there was intense years of being, you know, spending more time with each other than you spend with anybody else, you know? Constantly living together, you know, all this stuff, you know, uh, touring and practicing Non-stop. So I guess it was just time for a break, basically. Yeah. And yeah, it wasn't planned. It just happened. And then it was just, it kind of took its natural course, I guess, because, I mean, I'm not, I don't know if, 
I have no idea if I even talked to any of the guys for like a long time. And I guess nobody did, more or less, you know. But then all of a sudden, whatever years later, like, you know, somebody's like, hey, hey I got some songs, you know. <laughs> it's like, all right. It's like, you know, there's a, yeah, we got offered, we got some offer from some festival or whatever. It's like, hey, there's actually, there's an offer from a festival to go play. And like, hey, no, maybe, yeah. It was like some festival, because up until that time, like in the 90s, there was hardly any, there wasn't so many festivals. And I think we'd never played a festival. We only toured, we'd not, we'd not played this uh, proper festival like you do nowadays. There's festivals everywhere. But we'd never done one. But then there was somebody, it might have been whacking or something. Because like the label or somebody called our management, it's like, hey, there's actually like this festival. They want to like, you've not done anything for years and they want to they wanna book you for a show. We're like, oh, you know, I yeah. never even thought about it. It's like, okay, let's get together for, you know, let's get together for 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 this show. We'll meet up and we'll practice and we'll like, you know, see what what happens. And then at that time, we're like, yeah, I don't know if it was Freddie or Johnny's like, well, yeah, I, I I got some songs, you know. And they were like, oh, let's let's see what we do. And then there were some other festivals after we did the first one. Some other festivals got in touch, like, oh, we want to, you know, we want you to play. And then we decided, yeah, let's 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 try it again, and then we're like, let's make a record and see what happens. Yeah, so it was kind of like this natural. It was a natural break. It just happened, and yeah. there was no plan. It's just like we came home and just didn't do shit for a while. And then when the time was right, and there was, I guess, not even a plan of again. There was no plan of getting back together. It just happened. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and I'll, another thing that's interesting about Hell's Unleashed, like, because I know, like, the European promo CD contains an extra song, which is y'all did, like, another Venom cover of Black Metal, but you altered the lyrics and called the title oh, yeah, the yeah, Death yeah. Metal. That's but right. apparently, yeah. y'all never got the approval from Venom to change the title right. or lyrics. So it was pulled yeah, from the final version of the like album. That. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I forgot about that, actually. But yeah, that's true. There, again, there was this stuff with the label and, like, because none of that you had like yeah so i guess in the past it worked they got permission uh, obviously because you didn't change anything but then having this idea of making black metal but you make it death metal uh and altering it a bit and i guess that didn't work out so well but i mean it did get released somehow in the end anyways i mean it's out there i don't know if it's actually on like the maybe it isn't i have no idea <laughs> it's funny but yeah it was just an idea of making a cover and then not not trying to like upstage it or whatever, just but yeah, it's, it's a fun idea to make it a bit different to suit what we're doing instead. But then just like paying tribute to the music, but then like yeah, modernizing it and, and just yeah, make getting the lyrics to be a bit more like you and like your own version. But that's right, they were it was supposed to be on the record, but then it couldn't, it got pulled down, yeah. yeah. And then going into the next album, Sworn Allegiance, and I know this year does mark the 20 year anniversary of this album. Like, tell me about like this album. Did, did you feel like more comfortable after after Hell's Unleashed? Because you know that was like the first record after the break. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, it, there's a huge difference between those two records, <laughs> and I'm not. I don't because because the Hell's Unleashed when we were doing that, and at the time it was, yeah, kind of like. I don't know, baby steps. I don't know how you would put it, but it was, uh, you know, after a long time of not doing anything and you get back together and then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, because I mean, there, there was somebody had some songs and, and whatnot, but it was still like, yeah, I guess we were a bit rusty somehow because it's got a, it's got a bunch of good songs on that record. Uh, it's, it's got like, you know, one of my favorite songs is on that record, you know, like of all time, basically it, it, so there and there's there's one or one or two that we still like that turn turn into very good live songs because there's always a difference between a record like a song and a record and some work live some don't but there's a few of those that really work out live and that we still play to this day but it was a bit of a <laughs> yeah it was it was a bit weird I mean yeah it took a while to get your get your shit back together somehow uh, so so there was a big difference because. When the songs started like popping up for the the the, the uh, sworn legions one, it was like, wait a minute, this is okay, you know. And then when we actually recorded it, and, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, okay, now that's proper because you could tell there was like a difference, and it's like it really 
Yeah, that's because that's that's one of my favorite. Uh, I mean, when we did it, there was one of my favorite records after it was done. I was like, this is, you know, I was very proud of that because it actually was a big difference, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and it was, you could tell it was like, yeah, like the Hells and Leaks was somehow like what you, what you say, like it was a bit like, yeah, totally like yeah, night and day compared to yeah, those two. You, yeah, because you're trying to get into it, like you, you're not super totally comfortable and like still maybe kind of a bit like like you know because the way it kind of ended back in 97 when it's like it yeah, yeah things weren't great you know and you're a bit like okay we're gonna do this again i'm not because a lot a lot of stuff happened in five years you know if so you like it where you're at in life and like what you're doing with stuff you like can like is there really a point to start doing this again you know but then uh yeah but then we started making some more shows after the hell's unleashed you know like getting into it you know and then Okay, let's do another one, and that one really kind of just, you know, hit the spot, you know, somehow. Yeah, and then the next album, Mid Winter Blot. I love yeah. love this album. This is probably like my second or third favorite Unleashed album. I feel like it's yeah. kind of like a return to form a, a little bit. So, what was it like going from this to this? Well, that that was a bit more like I mean, you totally got back into it somehow. You could feel that you're getting back into it too. Like if the if the hell's on these was a bit of like a bit of a feeler. Like, is this gonna work? Are we doing this? You know, do we want to do this? And then the uh, Sworn Legions comes out, and we're like, okay, you know. I remember I was playing at the front because I mean we were kind of counted out at the time. A lot of people they were like, ah, you know, this is never gonna, you know, this is not gonna go anywhere. And it's like, yeah, you know, old stuff is better. Whatever, you know, there's no point. You know, you kind of get this kind of a thing and i remember i was going like the going to some friend's place and like well you know do you want to hear the new record and people were more like ah like they didn't really they're like ah well because they didn't really want to hear it because they thought it was going to suck you know it's the like people like ah you, maybe you should just give it a rest you know and you put that on it's like oh, oh shit people got really a lot of people got very surprised about that the uh, one of these is one and basically then you feel like okay we're back on it you know back into it and it's it feels good and like we're in a good place with each other too like personally you know because i mean all there was a bit of before that there was a bit of i don't know it, people were a bit tired like i said and the, you got like a new what do you how do you call it like a just like you know you got back into it and you got like a and then so then it kind of started moving like <clears throat> it did with the first records like you did the one and you started to get this natural writing process and just doing it so then when you get to meet with the blue it's it's kind of like the first and second album you know and then so it's like a yeah like a total restart you know and then it just started to go naturally so yeah to, to meet with the blue it was like a natural progression from the one before and then they kept going like that yeah so it was a yeah, it was that was a good it was a good experience, to, and I think because this is when we started doing uh, since this is when Freddie was starting to produce the records as well, and we were starting to record them ourselves. And Thanks. this is also like because the say Hell's Unleashed was, was done in a studio. Um, <clears throat> there was one we'd never been to before, and whatever. But then with the Sworn Allegiance, it's when we decided to like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna start recording and producing them ourselves because this is when Freddie was getting his own studio he was getting all into the stuff and like okay and then that's what made a big difference because if you can do it yourself and then there's there's no time pressure like if you would yeah. go into a studio and like there's a budget and it's like you have this amount of time you got you know you got to do yeah you know, there's, it it makes things very you know, relaxed different. Yeah, exactly. Because you're like, you know, there's no stress because stress is also good sometimes. Because so you always make a you always make a deadline for yourself, anyways. Because otherwise, <laughs> you can just go on forever. Yeah. But if you go into like, oh, we're gonna rent this studio, and okay, this it's called no, the budget is this, and it's like you have two days to do this or whatever. It's like then you know you have the two days to do this, and it's like, and it can be like, yeah, when there's negative stress and positive stress, and like all of a sudden it turns into negative, and it's not gonna, you know, you're not gonna. Yeah. So, it, but then, yeah, when we started doing it, it was more relaxed and it was, you know, an easy way to work and it was uh, a very good way to work for us. And it, yeah, and you could tell this is when it started to like, yeah. So those two records, like the 
Sworn Legions was the first to do that. And then it was to maybe a bit, I don't know, maybe a bit, uh, I'm not used to it. But then, yeah, after that, and with the Midrith Glut, then it would, you could really tell that this is a very good way of working, you know. So that's one of the main differences between those two is like the way we record it. Yeah, and one of my favorite songs from Adventure Brut is uh, "I Have Sworn Allegiance." I thought it was interesting how it was uh, was like a, a song title was almost referencing to the last to the previous album. So, yeah. so what was sort of like the idea of that to make like something like tied from like the previous album to the next? Well, uh, I mean, this Johnny wrote the lyrics, uh, so I'm, I can't say exactly what was in his head when he was doing that, but I think there's. Maybe not so much in the past, but the, there, you want to have something that connects things. You know, it's, I mean, because now the later albums have been like more, they've also been like pure concept albums where things actually really do go from one thing to another, like from album to album, and they, they intertwine all kinds of stuff. And there's maybe the beginning of that was there. Because it's like, yeah, why not? If you have a, you can have a song that refers to the album before, and some things can actually be intertwined and they can like, because as you know, as a listener, I mean, how cool is that? When you have, you know, when you when you're a kid and you're buying records and you look at them, you're like, wait a minute, hey, I see like there's like kind of Easter eggs in a way. You're like, wait, shit, this this can go. I can really it goes back to this record, and I can compare things. You, you know, look at things back and forth, which was kind of cool. And this is something I would have liked when I was a kid buying records. You know, when something is, when you can see these things that things are connected somehow. You know. Yeah. And then next album is Hammer Battalion. I like love this like this album. Like, tell me about making this album. Well, it's uh, there's I'm trying, same again. It's like this. I'm trying to figure out which which studio we did that one. And they're like, because we had different. Because Freddie was his own studio, but he was at that time he was kind of mobile. <laughs> you know, you you'd get a place to record the actual drums, for instance, because he didn't have his own, like, proper studio studio. So you'd have, like, he would bring his equipment to different rooms where you would record, you know, like, okay, we're going to borrow, borrow this this space to record, you know, whatever. He would just basically bring the equipment to wherever you would have a space to do the drums. So I'm trying to figure out which one that one, I think I remember. But it was... Those recordings started to go, like, really well. I mean, it was just me and him in those... Uh, just like okay, we're gonna do the drums out here, like you know, and like so, me and him lock ourselves away in a in a room somewhere, <laughs> and then just record, and you know, uh, and that was the first one. Was the first one we did, and I'm not sure. This is again, they they kind of go like come together because it's as in the beginning, you just say you're just doing it, you focus on what you're doing, you just get in there, and like you have the songs. Um, and just kind of go for it. And I think after we started doing our, our own uh, recording and producing and mixing and stuff, it just made things like smooth. Before you were kind of nervous about getting to the studio, kind of like you're like, shit, you know? <laughs> and you, not that you don't have to be well prepared because you still do, but at the, they were like, oh, I bet, you know, maybe I'm not, if you're like not 100 percent about something you can still like but we'll work it out you know we'll get in there we can work on this as long as it takes and we can do that you know which is really cool and and uh because that has like yeah it's got the hammer battalion i mean this is also we're trying to make like trying to make focusing on making concepts like this hammer battalion thing turns into a concept you know where you were like in it like you know you make a song and this song would be like a defining concept for the band and you could actually use this in like in uh, live you can like you can use this as a way to interact with the audience then you can also use it for like in incorporate this in merch and all this kind of stuff and like you have like a bigger plan of concepts like that you know totally and then then next up as Jagger still trebles i like this album this is actually honest believe it or not the first unleashed album i heard and i discovered like all the old stuff oh. so tell me about making oh, this cool well, same thing. It's like, I mean, these, like from, uh, yeah, from the, when, we, when we started recording ourselves and, and on until now, it's like this became like, uh, it's like just such a natural way to do things. Uh, it's almost like you can't like separate them from each other as far as recording them. It's just kind of like, 
I mean, to put it like you're like a machine is like that is the wrong way to put it because that may that would make it it's that would make it sound as if not like a natural process, but it's somehow it's like like you it's easier now to just focus on something because like before it was everything was a bit like more chaotic now it's a lot more structured now because you can just like you know exactly what you're gonna do you know exactly that there's nothing to worry about because uh, it's just just a good process you can just like you can like uh yeah it's like right, we're gonna do a record it's like ah right, let's do a record let's let's go and let's do it and like you have all these there's like a chance to to work on things and and like stuff you don't have time to do and like basically like any old the earlier records you're like you would really want it to turn out in some way but you didn't have the time for it kind of you know like you're like something which is also i mean makes it the early album they, they make them kind of fun to listen to and to think about because there's like a lot of things that shouldn't be on those early records but they were just on there because there was no time to not do them like yeah there's like i hear <laughs> which is kind of funny and we're like on the old the first records i mean there are so many mistakes like playing wise like for me like for the drums for example it's like i hear when i make mistakes and like, but they got left in there because there was no time to fix them <laughs> it's like okay that's good enough because we got to get on the next track yeah, yeah. which and then and but then you have to incorporate like you know there's stuff that i like i playing mistakes that i made on the albums but i do them now live because they're supposed to be there you know totally <laughs> so you can take a mistake and keep them right whereas now i don't know maybe maybe this is not such a bad thing but somehow but now there it's not like that anymore you know it's like if you want it to sound a certain way it's going to sound like that you know there's no so it makes everything a lot more solid in one way but then again maybe uh, but you still want to make it natural, you know? So this is, you don't want to, because I hate, I hate it when it sounds like, because that's why the word machine is like the wrong word. I hate it when it sounds like a machine is playing. You want to have, you want to have a, like a fluidity in it as well. Exactly. Which is, yeah. Which is, it's important, but it's, it's also tricky to get because it's, everything is, like all the new technology and shit nowadays makes things, it makes it hard to do something natural, which is weird, right? <laughs> it's which is that's bad because you want it to be natural and you want it to not be like a machine. But it's uh, but at the same time, you want to make a good product. You want to make things as good as you can. You want to make the sound as good as you can. You want to make the playing as good as you can. So it's like you don't want to have mistakes on the record, but at the same time, maybe those mistakes are kind of cool. But it's hard. It's a that's a fucking fine line between those things. Yeah. And then next album, Odelheim. I like, I really enjoy this album. And I know, like you mentioned, with all the concepts and stuff, like, like, is there like a lot of like research that, go, that goes in the hand when sort of like making these concepts? Yeah, um, for sure. I mean, he Johnny spent a lot of time with that. I mean, I mean, not only because yeah, there's of course you got to research because like uh, when you get to the later albums, when it becomes like a, a pure concept, pure concept albums, like they intertwine, they go into each other and tell a story. I mean, that's, uh, those, it, those are stories that are like, uh, they're not fact. I mean, because he, he takes this, the old, uh, like the Viking heritage and the, like the, and all this stuff and makes it into his own story and makes a new story about it, you know, what it would be like in modern day, et cetera, right? But, so of course you got to research the old facts and what actually really did happen. Then you got to figure out your own way of interpreting this and then to make it into like a modern day thing and to uh, coincide with now with nowadays and with reality, which is like a weird, it's kind of a weird, I mean, not weird, but it's, it's, a, it's a new way of doing it, which is, I think is cool. But of course that takes a tremendous amount of time and like focus to, get all the old facts straight and then just make your own story and whatever, you know, and just, uh, I mean, the, the, it was originally meant to be, I mean, it was originally meant to, meant to be a book, all this stuff. And I was, and then it, but it, it may still be and who knows in the future, but, but, uh, but it, then, so think of it as like a, writing a book and then making it into, to albums and, and, you know, lyrics, which is, yeah, it, there's a lot of work put into this. Next up, Dawn of the Nine. 
nine. We're getting close, man. So yeah, tell me about making, there. taking, tell me about this. I know next year will be the 10 year anniversary of this. So oh, how do you feel about this crazy. album now almost a decade <laughs> later? Yeah. Uh, that's nuts. 10 years ago. Yeah. Time waits for no one, does it? Uh, but no, I did, I, this is actually one of the, it stands out that some that I'm that was actually one of the most fun ones to record. I'm not sure exactly why, uh, but it was like I was saying earlier. It's like yeah, it's now you can do things a bit more relaxed and the recording process is more relaxed. It's like I was saying, but but there's still I don't know because I mean I yeah you, know, you got to work a full time job and you got to like get all the songs done. You got to record all the stuff. There's maybe not, you can't take vacation for 10 days to make it, you know, all this stuff. There's a lot of stuff that you have to, you know, it's a lot of work, basically. You the early mornings and late nights, you know, just to be able to do everything. Uh, so, you know, making the album is, it's, it's always a nice, I mean, you get like to get your, it's great to do it and it's, you know, you're accomplishing something, you're making something, you know, you to be proud of. Uh, but at the same time, it's a, it's a hard time. It's a hard, it's hard, you know, cause you can't like, you're not rich. You can't just like go hang out of the studio and then and, and just, uh, you know, like, ah, oh, this is, it's like, okay, shit. Yeah. It's fucking, it's 11 PM. I got to get up to go to work at five in the morning, you know, like, okay, like we got to wrap it up and we continue, you know, all this kind of stuff, you know, it's, so it's hard, but that one for some reason is we had a really good time recording that for some reason. I'm not sure why it was just because of how the songs were, or whatever. It just somehow is that was somewhat very relaxing to do. And it was really a good time doing it. And I mean, there's a few songs on there that are a bit different. I mean, like we were talking earlier, it's like it still sounds like us, like Unleashed, as it should, but there's a few songs that are slightly off the norm, you know, or you know what I mean. So there was somehow it was fun to record it when there was all like a some trippy songs on there that were like stuff we've not really done before and playing wise I've not really done before so that was a it was a fun project to do that one uh, and it, that, that's also one of my favorite like recent albums I think it turned out really good yeah and then next up your previous album The Hunt for White Christ I like this album yeah. is also first album on your current label Napalm Records so what is it like yeah. working with them on this uh well labels uh, I hate labels <laughs> no it, it, <laughs> yeah, no, it's the way it goes, my friend. Yeah, I know, dude. Tell me about it. But uh, it's, I mean, this is also something. It's like you don't, you don't notice it. I mean, unless you're like, uh, I mean, this is uh, for us. It's always kind of been this scenario. Somehow, it's. Uh, well, what's the best thing? Do you want to be on a big label, and like, and or you want to be in a small label, what it's, you know, when it comes time to change labels, you got to figure out what, what can be the best for you and what you're trying to do. Right. And you're somehow always, it never turns out really the way you want it with any label. <laughs> it's just, we do our thing and, you know, you have to, somebody's going to spread it and, you know, put your shit out there, which is great. You know, it's the, Alternative would be to do it yourself, which maybe in some ways would be better. I don't know, but but that's also a lot of work. So there's there's no way nobody anybody can put that amount of time into something. So you get a label, and you like you know, and and most of the labels we've had, it's never there's never it's it works out fine. It's just that you always kind of want you're always the, like it's it should be done this way or that way, and it kind of never does get done the way you wanted to no matter what so it's basically like you do your part they, they do their part and that's it because i mean we're, we've never been like the label's favorite <laughs> i mean it's you you get out there you do the best you can then they do the best they can about your stuff then you always want you always want somebody to do more you know yeah and this is not about napalm but in general it's like you know unless you're like a especially nowadays you know it's so attention span of people is so short and it's like and it, nowadays it's so much more like relying on the visual side of things and whatnot and it's like you know we're we're an old school 
death metal band, you know? What are you going to do? Totally. <laughs> so you just do the best you can. And like, all right, you know, this is what we do. And it's like, there's no, you know, you can't really change. I mean, I just, to this, to the new world with all this social media and stuff like this, it's like, you do your best, you know? And then like, you put out what well, you do, what you can, and then you fucking, and you hope for the best because you can't do much, you know. Uh, and this is, but no, there's, uh, so I'd say there's no, there's no difference when you change the label nowadays. It just, it goes on. It's like, unless it's horrible, you know, but so we did, we don't think about that. You just get on there, you buy a new label and then we focus on making a good record, you know. Exactly. And that one was, uh, yeah. And that one I think was, uh, there's, uh, that's also actually there's a lot of good songs on that album that I like personally it's like one of those albums where like, you're going to go out and play live and you're like which new songs are you going to play and it's like I want to play them all you know exactly. so you have to choose and that's like the biggest like the like the biggest because we don't argue in the band it's like we're too old to argue about shit there's never arguments you know it's yeah. always like but that's like the closer you get to an argument, it's like, I want to play that song. And oh, we'll play this one. It's like, uh, you know, when you get different opinions, of which, and that's on that record when that came out and we're going to like incorporate the live song or the songs into the live set. And there was like, you know, everybody had different opinions on what to play. And it's like, nobody was like, all right, okay, we'll do this one. And I, well, you know, it's, <laughs> it was funny because that, that, had, that album, I think, had a lot of strong songs on it, which was, uh, and yeah, so that's also some of like the the previous one, the Dawn of the Line, was like maybe my favorite to record of the newer ones, and like in total, like the my favorite of the newer ones. But that one had some of my favorite songs on it. Yeah, and then kind of breaking away from Unleashed because I know that same year in 2018 you joined up with Unanimated and you did their EP yeah. Annihilation. I know it also has mm -hmm. like Richard from Dismember. So how'd you yeah. end up hooking up with those guys and how different of a mind frame is it playing with Unanimated versus with playing with Unleashed? Oh, uh, that's so completely different. This is uh, this is I I actually joined uh, joined with them years before that. We just stuff didn't get didn't happen. Uh, I'm not sure which year I actually technically joined. 2011, was, according to Metal Archives. Yeah, exactly. So it's been, there was a lot of years when we were... Yeah. But this is... I mean, those guys are old. Like, we've known each other since we were kids, you know. Uh, so it was kind of... Because Richard was in... The, he lived in the States. Uh, yeah, he lives I in mean, Texas. That, so, yeah, not anymore. He moved now. He's back in Europe. Uh, but... uh. But the, so so, uh, Yuya, who was uh, at the time was the only the only member of the band uh, in Stockholm, uh, so we got around to like, oh, okay, let's do it. You know, let's do something. And like, I I will join. So we started practicing, and then it's, like, it's just me and him, like one guitarist and drums, which was tricky to uh, practice like that because especially with that band, they have a lot of like longer parts when there's like a rhythm guitar it's, it's like you know you get lost in that shit you need the lead you need yeah you know, but it, it, it took a long time to yeah you we would try to pray it, it didn't go anywhere until we until we got finally like a proper second guitar replacer guy you know which was you and us uh uh because we'd been trying to get him to join for years and he didn't want to do it but then finally i met him on i went to london to see a to see a, a festival, some weird festival in Hyde Park with Motorhead and Faith No More and all kinds of shit, which was great. And so I met him there and then we started talking, like, you should join. And then finally we decided he would try it out. And then that was great because that really got everything moving so we could practice at least as three people, you know. Uh, so we started practicing. And the difference there was uh, because like now with Unleashed, like the songs are, because we live, uh, you know, we live in, like two of the guys and at least live here, like two guys live up north. So there's no way you can just go like to the practice place and practice a couple times a week, you know? So you have to do things differently. It, you know, songs are written on different locations and there's it's more like modern, modern now, you know, <laughs> sending stuff and like you're working on distance, you know? Uh, and then like when you're actually time to record, then yeah, it's just a different way of working. But with Unanimated, we were practicing 
two, three times a week and building the songs in the practice room like you did in the old days. Yeah. Uh, so so that was the main plus. It's like, with at least, it's like we're, we've been doing this for a long time and, you know, we go out and we play this play shows, festivals, everything is, everything is, uh, how do you put it, uh, professional. You know, you know, it's like things get booked and we, you know, it's, we've done it so many times. We, it's very routine, you know? Yeah. It's like everybody knows what they're doing, what they're going to do, what's going to happen. It's more of a, it's more put together, but on animated, there is no structure at all. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's more of a, yeah, it's just a whole different vibe, which was very cool to me, uh, to be able to do that. Like get back into like going to practice, building songs from like the together from the ground up, which is, uh, as you would in the old days. So it was really fun. It was a fun experience to do that and just get back to the roof. You know, good friends. Go to, so just jamming, more or less, you know? Totally. Which is very cool. And then, of course, yeah, Richard being in the States and Mike being up north, it's, uh, you know, it's... But then it also makes it a bit like when you finally meet and you're... Because we did a few shows and did those recordings. It was, uh, it was a totally different vibe and, like, a totally different thing. So that was great. It's yeah. been very fun. And I know you also, so in going into the end of 21, you also did the victory and bl blood full, full length. I thought that yeah. was really good. And that was the last thing. Is there more plans to do stuff with unanimated? Like what's the status with that? Uh, status right now is, uh, is uh, we'll see. Uh, the same thing, like, you know, both me and Richard have like our other bands that, have, that take a lot of time. Uh, and of course take priority, like in that way. Uh, so, I guess it's, I don't know. it's uh, we'll see, you know, it's like, it's great when we have the time to, because that, that's, this is like, you know, the Victory and Blood album took years, <laughs> you know, because that's the thing too, if you if you have that process of writing songs, when you do it together, like jamming it together, like then you have to have the time to go practice a few times a week and there's, yeah, when that time is available, it gets done. But when it isn't, you can't do it. So we'll see. Like I said, that yeah, I'm not. I mean, we started writing those songs and putting them together. Yeah, so that that album was years in the in the process and it took years to get together. So uh, it's probably won't be anything coming out soon, anyways. All right. But it's uh yeah, but we'll see. This is uh that's cool too. It's like it's. I mean, I'm not sure if anybody remembers that band anymore, even. But it's. I mean. It's kind of a, like a hidden gem out of all these Swedish death metal things, you know. It's just in there, so well. Hopefully, we can make things happen again. Yeah, fingers crossed. But then your yeah. light, your light, your latest, the latest. Going back to unleash your your latest album, yeah. No Sign for Life, definitely was one of my favorite albums from twenty twenty one. So, what was the whole writing and recording process like for No Sign of Life? I'm back to it. It's same again. It's like this is now we're getting back to how we always did it and. Uh, and the same, I, I'm trying to remember how long in between those two, the that one, the one before is, and that was about three years. This is all, the, yeah. That's yeah. But I thought it was longer, maybe. But yeah, this is. I mean, there is of course shit. A lot of stuff happening around the time of all that stuff in the world, you know. Uh, I don't think it had any, really, any effect on how we did that and how we wrote everything. It just this was just. just business as usual just you know writing stuff putting it out making the songs making it as good as possible when the fucking world going to shit <laughs> outside you know what are you gonna do it's just uh i mean i remember we were, yeah we played actually one of the last shows in stockholm before this whole pandemic shit you know yeah so we then had our 30th anniversary which was a bit late actually because the 30th anniversary would have been in uh um, 2019. Yeah, but we actually the, the the anniversary show actually turned out to be in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was still yeah it had to do. But it was like in Stockholm, so we had this 30th anniversary show, and then I think the week after we played that show, they closed everything down. Yeah. And then there was oh, and then there was a couple years of nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Which was but, weird. Yeah, but of course, like the whole like certain virus that I refuse to name. I know it kind of like fucked up a lot of things during that time. Yeah. How did how did like you guys like face the situation as a band? Did, did like the whole pandemic have an impact on like that album itself? Uh, see, I, I don't think it did. I mean, it's 
because that actually there's yeah, for the album for the writing and all that it was just business as usual because this is that didn't have any effect on how we would write the songs or how to you know how to <clears throat> put everything together because this was still done as we always did you know and even if it yeah you know, if we'd been like a band to jam it together or whatever then it wouldn't have been the it wouldn't have been a difference anyways because we could still do it there. so that part i think had no the only thing it did was i guess give give more time to write stuff you know because there was no there was no going out playing shows or doing anything like that um so maybe yeah maybe it actually made more focus going into the songs uh, or the writing of that album it could be i mean to me there's yeah it's still it's you know it's there's no major difference, I think, to the albums before that, whatever. It's still like it's a solid, proper unleashed album, but, you know. Uh, but maybe there is some more time put into writing. Uh, it could be, actually, but since there was no other distractions at the time, because that's all you could do is write, you know. So you couldn't really do anything else. I mean, Freddie, he's got a studio. He works. That's his, you know, everybody else. He's the only one who doesn't have to go to a day job, like, because he runs a studio and records other bands or whatever, so I guess he would he do his best there because that was an issue too, I guess, with this whole shit going on because whatever limitations he would have or whatever. But but I think it actually yeah it, it made more people. I think maybe have more work. There's more people focused on writing albums than going out touring. Yeah. So it actually would make a difference somehow in that way. Yeah, and one thing to know is like like your drumming on Unleash's albums are are fucking great. So as a being as a drummer, where do you usually need to hear what the guitars are doing in order to lay down your parts? Or do you usually have like a whole beat being written and the rest of the band writes to that? Uh, well, when we record. It's uh, usually like a, for just the recording process. It's just me and Freddie will just do it. Uh, there is no real point for the other guys to be be there when we're doing that. If we're gonna do the drums, it's just me and him, and so, but we do it together. So he will. Uh, it's funny. He will do. He will be everything. He, he will be the, the engineer and the producer and the the guitarist at the same time. Because uh, so we'll be in the studio and he will. We will play the songs together, while we record it. So, but I like to have uh, the guitar in there as well, so I can play with the guitars. Uh, just playing. Just like. Some people do. They would play like the the drum parts to a click track or something, and just uh, without just without any guitars or whatever, just to do it by. Yeah, you, know, you know your parts, so you'll play them without with any guitars. But this, I like to have the guitar. Uh, so not, and also some, I guess, we would do it with a pre-recorded guitar maybe because we do we do a pre-production like the albums. Like before we even start recording, there will be like a pre-production of the record with the songs with like with uh with like uh what do you call it like uh, uh written drums and stuff on there as well so you get a feel of the songs before and then you would just change whatever you want to change you yeah know, when you start recording but uh, but i like to have i like to play it together with him so you can actually have a feel of the songs because you don't want it like if you just play the click it becomes very static uh so it's better to have it like when you're actually playing the songs with the guitar, you know, uh, uh, so that and because then you will get the the flow of the songs and like you get the it doesn't have to be like 100 percent on the click or whatever like this. You can play it like a like you play a proper song, you know. That's how I want prefer to do it because you would definitely get a bit more flow and uh, yeah, maybe it if it's not a hundred hundred percent like on you know on the on the click or on the spot, it just makes everything a bit more dynamic, I think. Because yeah. then it's, you can tell it's being played by a person, you know, and you can tell it's actually, somebody's actually playing the song, you know. Yeah. To me, I think it's better. <clears throat> it just, oh. even if, yeah, even if you don't notice it, like somebody this dude might not think about it, might not notice it, but it, you will get that feeling in the back of your head that it's actually more natural, you know. Totally. And talking about your live show, because of course I got to see you guys a few months ago on the 70,000 tons of metal cruise. And that was my first yeah. time ever seeing Unleashed and seeing you guys oh, cool. live is a totally different experience than to seeing you all than just listening to you all on the album. So how different of a mind frame is it to like recording versus like playing live? Is there kind of similar or they're kind of like completely separate? Oh, that's kind of, well, 
but it can't be completely separate because I mean it's the same songs and band or whatever. But I mean there is a huge difference, and it's this. All, I think we said this from day one, even like at least as a live band, you know. Uh, uh, I mean, of course, if, if we make the records and we uh, you make this good records, that you can as well. But it's something that you know, music should be experienced live. I've always thought so. It's same. I mean, you could go, you go see a show, and like, I've had, how many times does that happen? You go to see a show of a band you never heard before, you think it's awesome, you know, and then you go and you you, you look up their album, and it's like, ah, it's kind of, yeah, you know, <laughs> because live is such a different thing. You, it's such a more powerful experience that you can never get it like at your house with playing on your stereo. So we said that from day one. It's, this is, I mean, it, it's got to work live. It's got to be like, you can make great records and make the best records ever but if you can't pull it off live you know because you spend way much more playing live than you would do making records so live is the most important thing nice. it's all and we've always said that from day one so because and like and if you can't pull it off live then you shouldn't do it you know it's this uh, i mean imagine that if you like doing something you make a make a record and you can't pull it off live you know it's like and, and even if you can, I mean, some things maybe, I mean, fuck, I mean, we're getting old, you know, it's, some, it's hard, you know? it's rough on, I mean, I know, for me, it, it, it's like you're playing live is like fighting for your life, you know, because <laughs> you got to give it like a hundred, I mean, for it hurts like hell, you know, <clears throat> but, but that's the way it should be, it's because, then if I couldn't play live, then I would, then I would quit, because it's got to be, you got to be able to do it, you know. But then, of course, some things you can't. It's like, you know, if you're halfway to the set and you're going to play, like, some song, and it's like, this is a fast one or it's a difficult one or whatever, and it's like, why not? I might not pull it off 100%, but I'll fucking do my damnedest, you know. And, I'll, <laughs> and it's like, you was, oh, you didn't play that exact part. No, I didn't because it was, I was dying. So, but I, you know, so then it becomes more of a punk thing. It's like you, I'd rather just get it in your face and, probably like a you know like a hit in the face than it being like technically perfect you know because more of the feeling of somebody playing is more important than you doing it exactly you know exactly live live should just be like like getting run over by a fucking truck or whatever this is how it's supposed to be when you see live and this is the biggest focus would be this always yeah and but that's what makes it yeah that's what makes it i mean playing live is great and we've done it for a long time and it, there's something that like even if you play into like a yeah there's no crowd it's a small room or, or it's a, you know, whatever it's like it doesn't matter just go out there and just fucking destroy everything you know that's the focus that's what you want to do when you play live you know totally and being as it has been three years since no sign a sign of life have you all started working on the next unleashed album like what's the status with that if you're allowed to say fuck it's three years already yeah see this is <laughs> yeah time waits for no one uh, yeah, it's in uh, again. Like we're we've been working on it since the day that came out. Before that, even obviously, uh, uh, but there's yeah, there's no real. It's like there's no. Once the album comes out, uh, there's no. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure if anybody does that, but there's no like. All right, there must be a new album by this year, or by this time. It's like when it feels right, and when the when the. When when it's done, when the process is done, then the album comes out. You know, it's that's how you got to look at it. If it in the past, it was more like it was more like okay, it's got to be two years at least, or maximum two years, blah blah blah. And in the beginning, it was once every year, but now it's more like there's no rush. And obviously, you can't wait for years and years, but but we reasonable time frame, anyways. But it's being worked on, and I've actually. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly of how many songs are completely done, but uh, I reckon, uh, without saying too much, because we didn't, there's no decisions made yet, but I think there should be an album next year, I would reckon. Uh, wait, what year is this? Oh, yeah, this is, well, we're mid into this year. Yeah, next year, uh, there should be an album, album come out. I'm sure we might actually even record this year, but I'm not sure yet. There's nothing like set as far as a scheduled recording but it's well on the way and there's at least 80 percent of the record is written i would say all right uh so yeah so it's coming it's coming 
So. All right. And and kind of like in the end to sort of wrap things up, what's next for, for you guys, Anders? I know you mentioned that you're slowly starting working on the next album. Is there just like anything else you'd like to plug yeah. in terms of like tours and stuff? And is there a chance maybe you can bring Unleashed back to the States for a tour? We'd love yeah. to have you. We miss you. Yeah, I know. I wish. This is, yeah, yeah. Same here. It, this is just so, it just sucks that it's so hard to get over there and, and tour uh, just financially and and everything it's just i mean it's something that we want to do obviously but it's tricky uh because at the at the end of the, end of the day you got to pay your bills so you can't just go over there and for nothing you know and to make it financially viable and to know that you're not gonna lose your ass on it it's tricky but, but we're working on it uh i know there's some uh there's some things set for the states next year anyways uh um, so I can't tell you what it is at the moment. It's not yeah. official as far yeah. as I know. You'll but tell me when, yeah, you'll tell me when I turn off the recorder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe I will. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but there, there's plans for the U.S. next year anyways. Uh, until then, yeah, as well as writing the, the new album and getting that sorted, fixing some dates for recording all that stuff, getting it done, that's on the way. And then, yeah, we have a... We have a full festival season coming up. We started, we just played a show a couple of weeks ago here in Sweden, uh, actually, which is kind of rare. But then, yeah, we start in a couple of weeks. We we start the festival run. So we got yeah, a few shows in May. There's a few shows every month, different festivals the whole year. We'll be in, in Chile in uh, November, I think it is. Some longer trips. Yeah, so there's yeah, there's plenty of, plenty of stuff going on. So we're uh, we're old, but we're not <laughs> not slowing down. Nice. So uh, thank you, Anders, for this conversation. It's so glad to finally yeah. have Unleashed on my show. It's just anything else that that you would like to plug or or any final words you want to say oh. to the viewers that are watching this to close this out. I oh, the final words question. I have yeah, I hate it. Uh, <laughs> I think we covered a lot of stuff. We covered everything. I think it's like uh, yeah, always. Of course, I. Uh, grateful for all the people that still listen to us and whatever and uh, new and old it's i think it's it's death metal and metal in general is doing well so i think yeah it's going to be great i hope to uh, i just hope to see everybody at shows somewhere we're, we try to go as many places as much as we can so we're we're on it nice so, so thank you thank you anytime man anytime so everybody andrew schultz from unleashed and we'll see you next time